Good afternoon, my name is uh, Dr. Guillaume Vignat and I will be uh, discussing today the combustion of lean ammonia hydrogen uh, in porous media burners. This work was performed at Stanford University under the supervision of Professor Matthias Ine. First, a few words on porous media combustion. So this um, type of burner has application in domestic boilers, in industrial heaters and in gas turbine. And uh, the idea of uh, porous media combustion is that the chemical conversion between a premixed fuel and air towards um, combustion products is performed within, the, within an open cell ceramic foam, as shown uh, on this diagram here on the left. So in this example, you have a permixture of fuel and air flowing through a uh, flame arrestor foam burning here at the interface between a flame arrestor foam and a um, combustion foam. And the particularity of porous media uh, burners is that the uh, heat from the product can be recirculated towards the uh, inner side through the solid matrix by uh, conduction and radiation. This allows uh, what's called superadapted combustion, where this um, heat recirculation uh, allows a peak temperature higher than the normal adiabatic flame temperature to be reached during the combustion process, and this helps um, increase the flame speed. So in the context of ammonia combustion, this is particularly interesting because the laminar flame speed of uh, ammonia air mixtures is particularly low. On the diagram shown here on the top left, I uh, computed the uh, laminar consumption speed, which is the product of density by laminar flame speed, as a function of uh, equivalence ratio and um, fraction volume fraction of hydrogen in a uh, ammonia hydrogen blend, fuel blend. And this was done using free flame simulations in Cantera with uh, the uh, chemical mechanism from the University of California at San Diego. As you can see, the maximum flame consumption speed is achieved for a mixture at around uh, phi equal 1.1 to 1.15, and it's quite low in the order of 5 to 10 uh, centimeters per second. And this is a problem for stabilizing flame in practical configurations. One saving grace uh, in the context particularly of porous media combustion is that preheating reactants is quite effective to increase this flame speed uh, for ammonia flames. You can see on the right a graph showing the um, dependency of uh, laminar consumption speed as a function of the temperature of reactant. Uh, so this was also done for free adiabatic flames. Uh, and everything was normalized by the um, consumption speed at ambient condition. You have in pink a reference curve for a, a methane air flame, and then in orange and blue, uh, two curves for two ammonia hydrogen flames. As you can see, preheating this fresh reactant increases the flame speed by quite a bit, even more than it would for um, methane flame, and thus it um, would fully allow uh, combustion to be performed at very lean conditions where uh, normally ammonia hydrogen mixtures have a very low flame speed. And this is beneficial because it allows to reduce pollutant emission and also to improve the thermodynamic efficiency of uh, Breton cycles. In order to study porous media combustion for ammonia, uh, we used an experimental approach and we uh, designed a simple generic porous media burner. So in our burner, we had a perfectly premixed mixture of ammonia, hydrogen, and air in various compositions that was flowing through a quartz tube. Uh, this premixture then goes through a first uh, porous media plug. Uh, this plug is made of yttria stabilized uh, zirconia alumina. So this is a ceramic that has a fairly low um, heat conductivity and that has fairly small pore size and basically it acts as a flame arrester to stabilize the flame. In between this first plug and a second plug made of uh, silicon carbide which has a much higher uh, thermal conductivity and larger pore size. 
So the flame uh, will tend to stabilize in between at the interface between these two um, pieces of ceramic. In terms of instrumentation, we have a number of thermocouples to measure the temperature of the solid matrix, as well as uh, several um, exhaust gas analysis tools to measure NOx emissions, as well as uh, unburnt ammonia and unburnt hydrogen in the exhaust. Let's move on to the results. So you can see here on the left a stability map that was obtained with this burner for a fuel composition of 70% ammonia, 30% hydrogen by volume. The black line on this diagram shows the, um, the laminar consumption speed, so rho times the laminar flame speed of an unburned mixture at ambient conditions as a function of the equivalence ratio. The, the stable operating region of the burner is shown in blue here. And the lower, the lean extinction limit of uh, the system is at equivalence ratio of around 0.55 at most conditions. Uh, there is a fairly large flashback region uh, that uh, is observed for flames that, are, that have a mixture composition close to stoichiometry and low flow rates. If we, if we look at the effect of the hydrogen content in the fuel, um, so I repeat on the left this uh, diagram for 30% hydrogen in the fuel, and on the right you have the same diagram obtained for 40% hydrogen in the fuel. So as you can see, adding a little bit more hydrogen in the fuel allows uh, first to operate the burner at a slightly linear condition. We can go down to an equivalence ratio of 0.5. Um, and especially at higher flow rates, we extend the uh, lean extinction limit of the burner quite a bit. A uh, significant problem, however, is that the flashback region becomes quite a bit bigger, extended, extending from uh, 0 0.7 to over 1.1 in terms of equivalence ratio, and up to fairly large flow rates. If uh, we look at um, and the reverse direction. So if we reduce the hydrogen content in the fuel to 20% hydrogen here, the uh, stable region becomes a little bit narrower, as can be expected since uh, we reduced the uh, laminar flame speed. We are still able to stabilize flame at equivalent ratio of around 0.65 and at flow rates up to uh, 0.5 kilos per square meters per second. The effect of uh, hydrogen addition to uh, the ammonia mixture. Uh, I've plotted here the equivalence ratio at extinction uh, as a function of the hydrogen content of the fuel. And as you can see, we have a very strong dependency of this equivalence ratio at extinction. And uh, it goes from about 0.95 uh, at 5% hydrogen down to 0.5 at 40% hydrogen. And the dependency is in the form, um, it's basically the equivalence ratio is proportional to hydrogen content to the power uh, minus 0.3, which is uh, a little bit less steep than uh, what um, a number of studies found for swirled flames, which is quite beneficial in terms of being more robust to a disturbance in um, the pre-cracking system in practical ammonia combustors. Right, let's move on from um, the, the stability diagram and delve a little bit more into the uh, properties of the porous media burner. So we are looking here at the condition highlighted in red on the stability map on the right. So we have a constant mass flux, a constant hydrogen content in our ammonia hydrogen mixture at 30%, and we are varying the equivalence ratio and looking at its effect on the um, temperature profile within our ceramic matrix. What we find is that the uh, maximum temperature within the burner is found at uh, this location, which is the interface between the YZ, our YZA and our silicon carbide foams, and which is where we expect the flame to stabilize under nominal operating conditions. 
we see a gradual increase of the peak temperature with the equivalence ratio, which uh, is expected due to the increase of the adiabatic flame temperature associated with increasing equivalence ratio as well. Following uh, this flame location, the temperature decreases due to um, uh, radiative losses at the end of the burn. If we now look at uh, this temperature profile as a function of another operating parameter, um, I've highlighted the operating condition that we're looking at on the figure on the right here. We are at a constant equivalence ratio of 0.6, same constant um, fuel composition, 30% hydrogen. But this time we, I am varying the mass flux through the burner between 0.15 and 0.5 kilos per square meters per second. Again, in general, for the um, most nominal cases of, uh, with flow rate of 0 0.2 and 0 0.3, uh, the peak temperature in the burner is found at the interface between the um, um, alumina and silicon carbide phones. However, the temperature profile for the flow rate of 0.15 is quite different. As you can see, the YZ form is quite a bit hotter, even though the peak temperature is still reached within uh, at the interface between the two uh, ceramic packs uh, and so basically what is happening is that we are approaching the point where the flame is going to flash back because of the low uh, flow rate and it's starting some chemical conversion is starting to occur within uh, this um, zirconia alumina flame arrester block on the other end of the spectrum, if we go to the uh, highest flow rate of 0.5, what we see is that the highest temperature is reached slightly downstream of the interface, which is indicative that the flame is starting to lift off from uh, the interface and be stabilized very slightly downstream. Uh, last comment, you can see the start on the top here. These indicate the exhaust temperature and basically indicate that uh, we have some thermal losses within the burner and we can see that uh, the higher the flow rate is, the uh, lesser, relatively speaking, the thermal losses within the burner are. Oh, let's now move on to the pollutant emissions of this burner. Again, uh, the diagram on the right indicates uh, where we are looking at this pollutant emission. We are doing a sweep in terms of equivalence ratio at a constant mass flux of 0.2 kilos per square meters per second and uh, a hydrogen content in the fuel of 30%. All pollutant emissions are normalized to 15% uh, oxygen following standard practices. And we are focusing on the emission near the lean limit. So as you can see in red, these are the emission, the uh, NOx emission of the burner. So at an equivalence ratio of 0.7, they're fairly high. We are around 2,500 uh, ppm. And they decrease rapidly as we go towards linear operating condition. When we are close to the lean extinction limit of the burner at uh, 0.53 is the lean extinction limit of the burner, uh, we have fairly low NOx emission in the order of 1000 ppm at this point and um, a little bit over 100 ppm at uh, uh, over 200 ppm sorry at this um, point here. At the same time as NOx emission decrease near the lean limit there is a very rapid increase in unburnt ammonia within the fuel stream that goes up to 1,400 ppm in that case, as we are operating very near the extinction of the burner. Look at the temperature profile associated with uh, these conditions. What we find is that as we are uh, moving towards a very lean condition and the extinction limit of the burner, around 0.55 equivalence ratio, the temperature of the burner itself decreases quite a bit and this is beneficial for NOx uh, production but it uh, is not good for the combustion efficiency of the burner. If we now focus only on, on uh, NOx emission of the burner we are looking at here the um, variation of NOx emission of the burner as a function of equivalence ratio and uh, burner mass flux, what we see is that there is a uh, fairly important increase of uh, NOx production with 
uh, burner mass flux, especially near the knee limit. And uh, we, we uh, speculate that this is caused by the difference in operating temperature uh, between these different cases. Uh, as you can see, the, the operating temperature of the burner is, and especially the exhaust temperature of the burner, is quite a bit lower at a flow rate of 0.15 than it is at 0.3. To conclude, we have uh, designed and demonstrated a porous media burner for ammonia hydrogen combustion, and I've demonstrated that this burner is capable of operating over a large um, operating range. At very lean operation, close to an equivalence ratio of 0.55, the burner has fairly low NOx emission in the order of 2 to 300 ppm, and reasonably low uh, unburnt ammonia, the order of 1,200 ppm. So of course, in practical application at this point, we would either need to further improve this type of burner or use some sort of POS um, treatment to install it in practical system. Thank you for your attention and uh, uh, I'll welcome any questions that you may have.